new army captain tries to end her career. The background I used to be an armorer in the US Army. I was the person in charge of securing and maintaining all the weapons, I was stationed overseas at a base that only had one arms room, and I was the guy who ran it, so instead of just being responsible for the weapons in my unit, I was responsible for all the weapons in the entire post. On paper, that's a job that's supposed to be done by an E6 with a two-person support staff. In reality the position was chronically short-staffed. It was just me, as an E4, doing the job of three people. Because the position was critical to the operations of a bunch of different units, including things like PSYOPs and special forces where everything about them is classified by default, and joint operations with the Navy and Air Force, and a few foreign militaries who were working with the US, I had to get a security clearance that was higher than everyone else in my own unit. As far as I knew, there were only four other people on the post with clearance high enough to do what I did, and they were all officers. This led to some amusing situations where I was accidentally called for security briefings that were way above my pay grade. That sucked because I was on call all the time, and had to go to work anytime anyone needed a weapon. Being on call was supposed to be a duty rotation, but I was the only one who could do it. So, I slept in the arms room a lot. I wanted to make sure I had as little to do as possible so I got very good at my job. How good? During an army-wide review of the entire supply chain, my post was found to be the best run arms room in the entire army. I won a medal and everything. Then we had a change in command, and the new captain hated that I didn't have to go on training exercises because I wasn't allowed to be more than 30 minutes away from the arms room, ever. The Compliance The new captain was absolutely determined to take me on a training mission. She'd somehow gotten it into her head that I was a slacker, which I absolutely was, but only because I was efficient and pissed off that I never got to leave the base. So, she drew up a bunch of paperwork to sign the arms room over to the supply sergeant. I refused to sign, because the person with all the ammo and the person with all the guns are supposed to be different people. Next, she tried to sign the arms room over to the PSYOPs company commander. I refused to sign because that commander had become a friend of mine so I knew he was required to leave the base weekly for security briefings. Finally, she tried to sign the arms room over to our company's supply lieutenant. I tried to explain that the lieutenant didn't have high enough security clearance, but she cut me off. She said she was tired of my excuses. Then she ordered me to sign, and threatened me with an article 15. I wrote under duress on the paperwork. She didn't even look at the signature. So, I sent an email to the warrant officer who was in charge of logistics for the area, he was the guy who'd given me the award I mentioned earlier, so he was pissed when he found out what was going on, and went on the shitty little weekend training exercise and basically enjoyed my vacation. That sequence of events happened on a Friday afternoon. The chief didn't get my email until Monday morning. On Monday afternoon my captain was relieved of command. I eventually had to testify at her disciplinary hearing. My second favorite part of the whole experience was the supply lieutenant, who got a slap on the wrist for inadvertently obeying illegal orders because he hadn't learned the regulations before signing, saying is it like that for you all the time. This has to change. My favorite part was the full bird colonel in charge of the hearing asking my former commander your soldier was awarded for being the best at his job in the entire army. After he refused your orders the first few times, why didn't you start asking questions? Edit, some clarity about a bunch of questions I've been getting. This was at Camp Hialeah. It doesn't exist anymore, but you can look it up to see all the different units that were there. They all used the same arms room, and yes that's weird and it sucked. I had a TS clearance. It was explained to me that knowing the weapons logistics of the whole post was a big deal. I had the training and deployment schedules of two dozen units, including foreign militaries, other branches, and an SF group. That's a lot of important information, and it was definitely above my pay grade. I absolutely should not have been the person doing that job, but I was. I knew I needed to cover my ass, which is why I was so careful about record keeping. There were probably more than four people with TS clearance on the base. I only knew of four.
Unsurprisingly, none of them wanted to do my job and had the clout to say no when asked. I didn't actually go to any fancy security briefings. I was mistakenly called twice, and promptly told to leave. I think the person scheduling the briefings just sent a shotgun email to everyone who had a TS clearance. After the second time I stopped getting them, so someone must have sorted it out, at the disciplinary hearing, I was called to answer questions. I showed up, answered, and was dismissed. It was a long drive to another base for 30 minutes of standing and talking. I don't know anything about the results. The captain didn't come back. That's all I know. The award I won is called an Army Commendation Medal. It's not uncommon. I wasn't some kind of indispensable prodigy. I was just in a job above my pay grade and scared of ducking up, so I took very meticulous records. Because I was the only one doing anything, I had to really know the system, so, I got an award for being good at passing an audit. I'd like to thank the people who introduced me to Zach Hazard. I've been binging his stuff on YouTube since last night. It's hilarious and vindicating. And yes I know it's psyops. That was me having a moment of stupid and I'm not going to fix it because the jokes in the comments are pretty funny. Now to the comments. Warrant officers know their shit. OP replied. Oh yeah, that guy was awesome but also the last person in the world you wanted to piss off. Because of the weirdness about how my arms room was set up, he was technically my direct superior even though he was stationed on a different base. For a while, my company didn't actually know what my personal chain of command was. It was very catch-22. Would be nice if your job wasn't that important, could live the dream being the forgotten employee. I love it when there is a change of command, there is always some sort of drama like this and it's hilarious, and it always seems to be an officer trying to change everything only to leave a mark. And boy did she leave one lol. Being relieved of any command means she won't be getting promoted anytime soon and will fall behind her peers. Sucks to suck. I love it when there is a change of command, there is always some sort of drama like this and it's hilarious. Having been both officer and enlisted, I can speak to this. As an officer, when you take over command of a unit, there's an expectation of you improving the unit. Good officers understand that first, you're supposed to keep the unit at the same level, while you learn the ins and outs, and then make changes to improve the unit, because there are always ways to improve. Not so good officers think they immediately need to make changes to prove that they are a good officer and leader, and can increase performance anywhere they go. This is not a good route to go. Enlisted understand that any change of command is going to result in change, and hope that they get a good officer. This is generally true for any leadership position. The good ones will find out what people do and why they do it that way before trying to make changes. The not so good ones will just find out what people do before trying to make changes and the bad ones will just start making changes without learning anything. That's not to say that change is never needed, but making things better always involves knowing not just what's supposed to be happening, but also what the real world situation is. Signing under Duras was brilliant. Is that legally an option? I come from a different branch, and I'll admit my go-to in that situation would be to request a court-martial and ask for the ADC. I'm just wondering if adding under Duras has any legal difference from a normal signature. This. I would have responded to bring on the Article 15. UCMJ specifically says lawful orders. After he refused your orders the first few times, why didn't you start asking questions? Absolutely this. If someone who has been there a while says no to a reasonable order, you need to find out what it is that you don't know that turns it into an unreasonable order. Why didn't you start asking questions? This is the exact moment in time when that new captain knew she was boned. Many many people are convinced that their rank slash degree renders questions immaterial, they already know everything and have zero curiosity.
your soldier was awarded for being the best at his job in the entire army. After he refused your orders the first few times, why didn't you start asking questions? This touched me in my happy place. Nice.